I would take a motion um, to approve the minutes as printed uh, with your materials that was emailed out to you. Nelson moves. I second. Okay. Nelson moved and Jason second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. same sign. Okay, minutes approved. All right, let's move on. Uh, First item on the agenda is board vacancies. Christina. Um, we have still um, no applications that I am aware of for our mental health practitioner um, opening. I have heard rumblings that there are interested individuals, but I have not actually seen um, an application. So we are still waiting. Um, I have continued to push it out whenever I come across a new person, um, a new potential victim. I push it out and try to encourage them. But so far, I have not had any luck. Okay. Well, as always, if anybody runs across a, a candidate, pass them on to Christina and hopefully we can get someone to fill that spot. So item number two, opioid settlement. We had a subcommittee that was looking into that. Um, Christina, I don't know if they've given anything to you or or who wants to uh, give us an update on that report, but I'll uh, turn it over to you at this point and whatever report we have, uh, I'm all ears. Yeah, so I went ahead and I put it in the chat. I shared it in the chat. I know some will not be able to view it for those who are on the phone. So I will go ahead and give a summary. The subcommittee did meet uh, last week. They discussed a couple of different options. Um, they asked for um, some feedback that I was able to get from them on whether certain activities would be approved uses. Um, and if there was a deadline, I was able to confirm um, there is no deadline for the spending of the $1.4 million. Um, and of the uses that they discussed, one of the approved uses was the ARCH program, which is the ARCH co-responder program. Uh, the recommendation from the subcommittee was to dedicate $250,000 for the next two years to the program, so a total of $500,000, and then to continue, essentially continue the discussion and the dialogue and looking at other approved uses over the next several years. Um, but that is the current recommendation from that subcommittee. Can you give us a little more in, insight into what exactly that is? What what services are, are we purchasing the, with that? So the ARCH co-responder program is where we send licensed clinical social workers out along with community paramedic to calls that are for mental health, uh, they're for substance use, therefore houselessness, um, and often, of course, those calls have multiple elements to them. You know, if, if there's mental health, there might be substance use, there might also be houselessness. Yeah. Um, and the purpose of the program is a lot of these calls, you know, the either if a if fire responded, strictly fire responded, they didn't have enough time to necessarily be there and deal with anything except the emergency portion of why they were there. Police, they were in the same boat. Um, you know, they they have very few options. Uh, they had very few options except to call AMR and have a transport to the ER. The purpose of this program is, you know, the social worker and the community paramedic as a unit can go out, respond to these calls, free up our safety responders, public safety responders to go to, you know, police need to be going to calls for criminals, fire needs to be going to some of those medical and fire calls. This frees up time for them and it allows this crew to sit and spend more time with a client and help get them into services um, connect them with someone who can help them with housing, get them immediately into seeing a therapist if need be, connecting them with, you know, substance use treatment, all of those things. They spend a lot more time with each individual. 
than is normal. But what they see then is a decrease in calls from those individuals or about those individuals to 911 because the purpose is to help solve their problem and get them to the right place. Um, so ARCH has been trying this now for about a year and a half. Um, they've had a lot of success in this last year. And the wonderful thing is that FIRE has this great public safety sales tax to help pay for their community paramedics. Um, health does not have a similar tax that will cover um, our social workers. We have some grant dollars that were dedicated to it that we were able to dedicate to it. Those grant dollars end on June 30th. Um, you know, there are some other dollars that we could help um, prolong, but it, it wouldn't be for very long. So we were looking for funding that would help keep these social workers and the opioid settlement dollars. It's one of the programs that it can definitely fund. So, so we Christina, let me ask you this. What's what's the mechanism next? Do we, do we just do you just carry that recommendation to the larger uh, council um, from our group? Is that how this is going to work? Yes, I would attach it as an information only item to it would be the February 19th council agenda. Um, and it would be there as an information item as a letter from the board to the council with the recommendation for at least this pot of money to be used in that method. This, of course, is the recommendation from the subcommittee. It is up to the, the board as a whole to decide whether that's what they want to carry forward. Do, do you need a do you need an action item on this? I would need a motion to to carry this forward if that's what you so desire. Yes. So if everyone's comfortable with this, I'd entertain someone to make a motion to uh, um, carry this recommendation or make this recommendation to the larger uh, city council. And this is Terry. I'm a huge believer in that program, and uh, I move uh, that we send the uh, subcommittee's uh, opinion as our own the committee's opinion. Got a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Jason will second. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, thanks. Uh, first, hey, all I'd quick... say was thanks to those people who who uh, did this work. So I, I, that's all I'd have to say. So I'll didn't mean to cut somebody off. Oh, no problem. Hey, it's Daryl Nelson from Centerpoint. Uh, Christina, I was just going to let you know, ironically, we just had the first of a couple of scheduled meetings with uh, IFD and AMR um, to talk about the community paramedical program more broadly. Uh, we explored it in the past and there wasn't uh, identifiable funding sources. CJC has been doing this for a good while and is pretty established for us. It's relevant. Um, on a couple of three key points. Obviously, we are just in an incessant state of overflow in our emergency department and with our inpatient census. As a matter of fact, yesterday, all time high at center point, 317 patients in a 285 bed hospital. Um, and so um, I just I just think it's uh, of interest that um, it sounds like these programs, which I think are phenomenal, as Terry said, are starting to get some traction because as soon as we end up catching them from fire or ambulance, you know, we're triaging them in an overflowing ER, and then they're oftentimes just kind of back out if they don't meet criteria to be admitted. So we're trying to figure out some bridge strategies. A majority of these are behavioral health, but there's a population of these patients that are medical um, as well and with limited resources. So. Um, there might be some additional opportunity for, you know, some collaborative efforts. The work group at the hospital, um, like I said, is really just getting started to kind of explore it. I just wasn't aware about this facet. I don't remember them mentioning this bucket. They mentioned some state and federal dollars, I think, but maybe that was tied to this somehow. But I don't think it was restricted to behavioral health. So just a observation that there may be some opportunity for more collaboration to help um, kind of across the whole provider and caring landscape. Uh, any other comments or any other discussion? If not, um, all those in favor of the motion as presented indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, Christina, you've got a recommendation. 
Uh, item number three, communicable, communicable diseases. And I will go ahead and introduce Lauren Campbell again, who is one of our epidemiologists and our public health manager. I know she was going to run numbers today. Lauren, are you available? Yeah. Finally got to stop chasing my cat around. OK, so from December to January, we saw a decrease in our number of COVID cases. We're now seeing about an average of six new cases per day reported to the health department. Those are, again, only people who seek testing or are seeking treatment. Um, anyone who tests at home, I don't really get unless they just give me a call, which isn't very often. Um, in that same time frame from December to the end of January, we saw an increase in our influenza A and B cases. Um, the amount of B we saw in January was almost three times what we saw in the month of December, whereas influenza A, we only saw about 50 more cases, so not quite as big of an increase. Um, outside of that, we saw 11 animal bites five tuberculosis cases, which includes active, latent, and um, suspect cases. Those suspect cases ended up being another mycobacterium, but originally came in as tuberculosis. We saw 28 STIs, and then a small variety of other diseases, but the numbers are so low that I can't say exactly which ones we saw because of um, HIPAA purposes. Um, right now, we're just finalizing last year's numbers and then wrapping up our immunization audits we've been doing at the child care centers, where more of them have been in compliance than we thought they would be, and not quite as many as exemptions as I expected. Um, that's all I've got, if anyone has any questions. Lauren, thanks for your report. Uh, with that, we've covered our agenda, agenda, and so we can get hungry people on to dinner. Uh, I would take a, entertain a motion to adjourn. Do you have something, Christina? Yeah, I have just one thing I wanted to mention. I know um, many of you already know, and I know um, Dr. Nelson sent something on, too. Um, I want to just mention that Dr. Potts, who, of course, was a very long time member of the board, um, did pass away at the beginning of January. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know i know many of you served with him um, many of you knew him he of course was not only just a board of health member he did so many things for our community and was here for us for so long and so i just wanted to publicly mention his passing and let you know thank you so uh, again i'd entertain a motion to adjourn hey, oh christina when's our next meeting you always ask me that and I'm never prepared. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll get it one day, but it won't be soon. April 4th. Okay. So 4 4 24. Okay. With that, um, I entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'll make I that motion. Somebody out there. <laughs> All right. Hey. Um, great. I'm not even going to take them. <laughs> We're adjourned and uh, want to thank everybody for showing up tonight. Christina, thank, thank you. Take care. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.